good afternoon and welcome to Clean Sports Tech Talk. I'm Scott Faree. I'm Nick DeMars. And this is episode nine. Today we're going to talk about a product that may not be the first product that comes to mind when you think about Clean Sport abrasives. Uh, when you're walking through the shop, uh, it may not be the item in your shop that's synonymous with our brand, but it is a, an item that we specialize in, and that's saw blades. Uh, Nick, tell us a little bit about uh, what to expect from today's episode. Well, we're going to be looking at uh, an in-depth look, pretty much, at, an, at uh, the various components that make up the saw blades. Um, for now, we'll just go ahead and get started in that. We'll talk about virgin German steel. Uh, virgin German steel is what these saw blades are made of. Um, when you think about steel throughout the world, there are two pretty much main, or should I say, well-known types of steel. Uh, we're looking at Japanese steel and we're talking about virgin German steel. Now the Japanese steel is more suited toward cutlery, things like this, uh, that you can really fine tune and get a sharp edge on. The German steel is the workhorse. It's strong, it's durable, and that's why we put it on things such as saw blades and things like that. Um, we're also going to talk about these heavy duty flattened plates. You know, these aren't your, these aren't your grandmother's saw blades. These bad boys are tough, they're, they'll, they'll withstand a beating, um, they're really good, uh, good high-end uh, high saw blades. Um, they're flattened, precision flattened, uh, to a point to where you get no wobble whatsoever. Uh, they're balanced really well, you don't get any, any run out, anything like that in the cut as you're going through it. Um, we're going to talk about the large resharpenable carbide tips. Now, what's interesting, if you run to one of these uh, local box stores and you buy a saw blade, yeah, you're going to get a, a carbide saw blade. It's going to have the carbide tips. It'll have the plate. You'll notice the plate is a lot thinner. And the carbide tips themselves will also be a lot thinner. What that means, as far as our saw blades are concerned, is that you can resharpen these things several times. Um, I'm not exactly sure how they work it in all parts of the country, but here in North Carolina, we have some men that, that basically have a sharpening system set up in their van and they'll run from wood shop to wood shop. They'll pick up the saw blades, they'll pick up the router bits, things like this. They'll sharpen them, dip them in the wax to protect the freshly sharpened teeth and bring them back. And so, you know, with these saw blades here, you get a long life out of these things because you can sharpen them so many different times. Uh, we're also talking about the high grain, uh, high quality micrograin carbide. When I talk about micrograin carbide, what that means is in, in any metal, you'll find that there's little grains of metal in there. If you look at it, for instance, under a microscope or something like that. And the size of the grain is a good indication of how sharp you can actually get that thing. So when we talk about micro-grain carbide, those are tiny little grains. That allows you to get an edge on here. Well, in fact, this edge is sharp enough that if I were to push my finger against one of these teeth, I'd get cut, plain and simple. Uh, you get a really good sharp edge on these micro-grain carbide tips. Uh, the laser cut plate, uh, when we say the plate, it's the main body of the saw. Uh, this thing is labor, laser cut and like I mentioned earlier, very precision cut um, to certain tolerances and uh, you know the gullets and the, and the expansion slots and various things that, are, that make up the body of the blade, including the bore, are all cut by a laser CNC machine, very accurate, you know, just a kind of a fine-tuned system. Uh, also, we, uh, we have a trifoil brazing that's used to mount these carbide tips to the, to the plate itself. Uh, and, and when we talk about brazing, what we mean is we take two different metals and we heat them up to the point to where they're almost ready to melt. And at that point, we use a brazing compound to bond those two together and it actually bonds those two metals together. It's not the brazing compound holding the two metals together, but the brazing compound acts as a flux in between to bond those two metals together. So you get a very, very good hard uh, joint there. Uh, in fact, uh, chances are this tooth, if anything's going to happen to it, it's going to break rather than come off the plate. That's how good the bond is there. And then we talk about the extremely tight tolerance. As you know, I mentioned earlier about the balance and, and how you don't get any run out, run out out of these saw blades. And that's the truth. I mean, these things really, I've used them numerous times myself, and it's just one of the best cutting blades I've ever used. It sounds like there's a lot more to it than just grabbing a saw blade and making a cut. Absolutely. So we hope to have a conversation today about our saw blades and what makes them specific and how they can help you save money and make a cleaner cut in your shop. And hopefully by the end of the day's conversation, it will be your grandmother's saw blade. Absolutely. And so get her one for Christmas. If you have questions, we encourage you to send those to Tech Talk, T-E-C-H-T-A-L-K at cleanspore.com. Uh, we've been working hard on a video series on the saw blades. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look at video number one in that series.
Over the years, Klingspor has worked hard to ensure that we are offering not only the best abrasives, but also some of the best accessory products available. We are proud to be offering a full line of industrial carbide tipped saw blades that are the picture of quality right from the get-go. Our blades are 100% manufactured in Germany to the highest standards. They are laser cut from virgin German steel and are precision flattened, ground, and tensioned for balanced cutting. They offer thick carbide tips to ensure clean cuts and superior life. When it comes to applications, the names of our saw blades speak for themselves. But which properties should you actually look for to get the most out of your blade? Our ripping blade is specifically designed for efficient, smooth ripping of softwood and hardwood. The combination of low tooth count and large gullets make this blade fast and aggressive. The alternate top bevel configuration on the thick carbide teeth creates a slicing motion that removes material at a high rate of speed, providing a fast and aggressive cut. This blade works well on table saws or gang rip saws. Our glue line ripping blade features a triple chip grind tooth configuration, which allows for aggressive feed rates, yet produces an extra smooth cut finish. This shears the wood so cleanly that joining the stock prior to gluing is not even necessary. It also features a thick plate and laser cut expansion slots that minimize vibrations for a smooth, stable cut. This is a good blade for table saws, sliding table saws, or single and gang rip operations. Our final blade we're going to feature today is our rip and cross cut combination blade. In just about any wood shop, the situation will arise where one blade is called upon to cut several different materials in either or a rip or a cross-cut situation. This blade will effectively rip or cross-cut hardwood and softwood, as well as sheet goods such as plywood and particle board. It features the time-tested combination blade design, four alternate top bevel teeth with a flat top raker that clears the swarf or cut material out of the cut path. This is a great blade for all-purpose cutting. Join us for our next video in the series where we'll examine some of the general purpose blades and some of the features that put Klingspore saw blades in a class of quality that is second to none. Video from our production team there. Uh, Nick, a question that I have and that we get often when we get phone calls on saw blades is that when we look at the different saw blades that we have, we see uh, a variety of teeth count on these uh, tooth count on these saw blades. Can you tell me a little bit about how that impacts the cutting process? Yeah, when you're um, when you're doing some really really rough cutting, uh, you're you're not going to want a real high tooth count. You're basically looking to uh, just very quickly cut your way through some material. Uh, you're not looking for an extra clean cut. You're not using this for any kind of a finishing blade, anything like that. So you're going to have a real low tooth count. And then we, when we move up to the higher tooth count, we are getting into the finishing blades. So for instance, with a, with a miter saw, you're looking to uh, cut, chances are, finished material. Uh, I know when I was in cabinetry for all those years, when I went out to install a set of cabinets, the crown mold that went on the top was already pre-finished. And so we would have to have an extra clean cut in that pre-finished crown mold. So that would be the higher tooth count. So basically what it boils down to is the uh, higher the tooth count, the cleaner the cut you're going to get. And on a lower tooth count uh, saw blade, does that affect my rate of speed for my cut? Yeah, it does. Actually, the lower tooth count saw blades are going to be fewer teeth and they're going to rip their way through the material a lot quicker. Where with the higher tooth count, each tooth is taking out a little less material. So each tooth, you know, as it goes through, is going to cut cleanly. And we'll talk about the various tooth configurations coming up. But, uh, but yeah, the higher tooth count blades are going to cut slower. Well, let's talk about that now because of some of these saw blades the teeth are shaped differently. Can you tell me what bearing that has on, on the cut? Yeah, it, it has a great bearing on the cut. Depending upon the material you're cutting, for instance, like I was just talking about, that pre-finished crown mold, you're going to want a clean slice, basically, in that. So for, for a situation like that there, you're going to have a high alternate top bevel. And what that means is a tooth on the, uh, will have a bevel that starts on the right and goes to the left, and the next tooth will have a bevel that starts on the left and goes to the right the high part of that bevel means it's a steeper angle. So that's going to be more of a slicing action than a chopping or a gouging out. 
uh, and so that's going to give you a cleaner cut. Uh, with some of our blades, we have what's called a raker tooth in there. Like, for instance, this blade right here. It's got an alternating top bevel tooth, one to the right, one to the left. At the very end, it's got a raker tooth, and that's a flat top tooth instead of being angled. So what the deal is, these angled teeth, yeah, they'll cut this way and this way, but they leave a little V of material in the bottom of that cut. And so what that raker tooth does is serves two purposes. It comes through and flattens out the bottom of that cut, and it also takes the, the swarf material that's left in that cut, pushes it down into the gullet so it can be va evacuated out later on. And, and tell me, I saw in the video the KSB 10500, which is one of our more popular blades. Tell me a little bit about that blade. It's amazing. Just so happens we have one of those right here. The KSB 10-500 is one of those blades, if you're uh, in a situation where you're cutting multiple things in the shop and you don't want to take the time to uh, change out a blade every five minutes, you know, say for, for instance, one minute you're cutting plywood, next minute you're cutting melamine, next minute you're ripping through some hard uh, oak or something, or cross cutting, this blade here can pretty much do it all. I mean, if, if you're in that situation where you want one blade that pretty much can cut about anything, the KSB 10-500 will do it. And really that's evident in the fact that this is our best selling blade. It's easy to see why a lot of applications there. Uh, let's take a look at video number two in our five part video series on saw blades. When you're looking for a saw blade for a specific application, you're going to have to consider how many teeth you'd like it to have, the quality of cut you need, and several other factors. As a general rule, the more teeth a saw blade has, the cleaner cut you end up with. And certain tooth configurations and gullet sizes produce various types of cuts. One might be better for solid surface, where another is more suitable to cutting fine trim and molding. Clingspore makes this easy. Our saw blades are named according to its suitability for a specific application. Our ripping blade is configured for ripping or cutting in the direction of the wood grain. Our glue line ripping blade is configured for a very clean cut that will allow you to glue multiple pieces together without having to run them through the jointer. Our solid surface blade is exceptional at cutting solid surface, plexiglass, vinyl, and laminate. So let's look at the next blade in the series. Our rip and cross cut combination blade provides a great crossover between ripping and cross cutting. This blade features a tooth configuration of four alternate top bevel teeth, followed by one flat top raker and an open gullet for chip clearance. The ATB teeth provide a sharp clipping action that leaves a very fine cut, while the rakers help to remove the material from the kerf. This is a perfect blade for a situation where one blade needs to serve several purposes. It is excellent at ripping and cross cutting, and also really good at cutting sheet goods like plywood and chipboard. Clingspore's general purpose blade is a good all-around blade for rough cutting, ripping, and cross cutting. It will not provide as smooth a cut as some of our more specialized blades, however when you need to rough cut a lot of material in a short period of time, this blade can fit that bill. Our final blade for this video is our general purpose plywood and laminate blade. These blades are specifically designed for clean cuts in single-sided plywoods and laminates. The greater number of teeth, either 60 or 72, and the tooth configuration provide an excellent balance between feed resistance and finish. This leaves a clean finish on the top side of the plywood or plastic laminate materials. This blade can be used in conjunction with an adjustable scoring set to achieve a clean cut on double-sided laminates. Join us for video number three in our series, where we'll talk about Klingspore's adjustable scoring set, as well as the blades designed for cutting melamine, plastic, and solid surface. A great video on our general purpose and our cross-cutting blades there. Uh, before we get into some content on that video, a uh, viewer wrote in and asked this question. They heard you mention gullets uh, in our first part of this episode. Can you tell us a little bit about gullets? Sure. Uh, right behind each tooth, or in front of each tooth, depending on how you look at it, is this little uh, V'd out area here called a gullet. And you'll notice right off the bat that each one of these is rounded. Well, for the simple reason that if that were a square cut, 
that would cause a weak spot in that particular tooth. So that's why they round those. It keeps the strength in that material. But what the gullets do is the gullets collect the material that's been cut for e evacuation out later on. And so, you know, depending upon your tooth cut, that's about how many gullets you'll see. If you have a 24 tooth blade, you might see 24, 25 gullets. Just uh, basically one gullet per tooth for, so that when that tooth cuts the material, that gullet gets rid of the, the leftover material. Okay, and another question, Mark wrote in and he says, if I could have one blade for my shop, one workhorse blade that's my go-to blade to do the most around the shop, what blade would you recommend? Um, there again, <laughs> it's a situation where you're going to need to cut a whole bunch of different materials all in one day. Um, you know, changing out a, uh, a, a blade on a table saw is not a truly labor intensive exercise, but when you have to do it three or four or five times in a day and you spend five minutes doing it, well that time adds up after a while. Uh, it's much quicker and more efficient just to have one blade. And this ba ba is basically the blade that we're talking about, the KSB 10-500. Uh, it's a 50-tooth blade. It's, it's uh, set up to cut just about any material you can think of. We can rip with it. We can cross-cut with it. And in fact, it's being listed as uh, excellent at ripping and cross-cutting and really good at cutting just about anything else. Sheet materials, melamine, plywoods, laminates, uh, 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 particle boards, things like that. It'll cut about anything. We appreciate you taking time to send in those questions. Just a reminder that if you do have questions about saw blades or any other topic that we've covered, send those into techtalk at cleansport.com. Uh, Nick, the term hook angle was in that video. Uh, can you tell us about how that impacts the cutting process? Uh, the hook angle is basically, <coughs> if you drew a straight line, let's do it this way. If you drew a straight line across this blade from side to side right through the center hole, okay and then compared that to the angle that the tooth is at that's what's referred to as the hook angle and what that does is that hook angle uh, allows the saw blade to be somewhat self-feeding so in other words uh, an aggressive hook angle will help pull that that material into the saw blade where uh, what we call a negative hook angle see it, there comes a point when you draw that line through here if the tooth we're straight with that line, that would be a zero degree hook angle. Anything that leans back from that line is considered a negative hook angle, and anything that goes forward of that line is considered a positive hook angle. So like I say, those positive hook angles help pull the material through. But when you come to some really hard materials, like for instance, I talk a lot about melamine. Melamine has got a really hard coating on the surface of it. And when, when a, a really positive hook angle grabs onto that melamine, it could possibly pull that material through too fast. So in a situation like that, you want total control over the feed that you push that material through that saw blade. So that's why we put a negative hook angle on there, just enough that you completely control how fast that material goes through the saw. So it sounds like when you change material, the cutting process changes and it sounds like that explains a lot of the intricacies that separate these saw blades and that's why we have such a wide variety of our specialty saw blades uh, but what about single-sided plywoods and laminates um, single-sided plywoods and laminates you know i talk a lot about router bits too and router bits is one of those things where if you're cutting downward if it's a if it's a spiral router bit and it's cutting downward the top edge is going to have a clean cut the bottom edge is going to have a little blowout well it's the same thing with a with a saw blade because see, this saw blade is standing up this way here, facing me, let's face it toward the camera so everybody can see, and it's turning in this direction. So it's cutting at a downward angle. So single-sided plywoods and laminates, when you talk about those, you're looking to get a clean cut on one side. Um, basically in that situation, for instance, if you're building a cabinet, you're not gonna need a clean cut on the inside of the cabinet in certain places because when that cabinet goes together, that cut edge is gonna be cut, uh, covered up. Say, for instance, you've got two side panels that have rough cuts on them. When you put the bottom in that cabinet, the bottom of that, that cabinet, the bottom of that cut is covered up. You're never going to see that if it's chipped out. So single-sided plywoods, laminates, things like that, uh, you need a tooth that's going to cut cleanly on the top side only. So Klingspore's put a lot of time and thought into the saw blade that you're going to use for your next cut, like these blades on our next video, video number three of our five-part series. Welcome back to our Klingspore saw blade guide. 
In our last video, we talked about the general purpose cutoff blade and how it can provide a very clean cut on single-sided plywood and laminates. But sometimes you need to achieve a clean cut on both the top and bottom sides of the workpiece at the same time. For panel saws and sliding table saws, we have Klingspore's adjustable scoring set that works in conjunction with the general purpose cutoff blade to provide smooth, clean cuts on the top and bottom simultaneously. The adjustable scoring set consists of two 12-tooth saw blades with shims to adjust the kerf width from 2.8 millimeters to 3.6 millimeters. With the scoring set performing a shallow score on the bottom side and the plywood and laminate blade finishing the remainder of the cut, you end up with a chip-free cut that has a finish-ready edge. Next, we have Klingspore's double-sided melamine blades. Available in both 10-inch 80-tooth and 12-inch 96-tooth varieties, these blades are designed for cutting double-sided melamine on saws that are not equipped with a scoring unit. The sharp 30-degree high alternate top bevel and negative hook configuration will slice cleanly through fragile coatings and laminates. The tooth design will not alter the bottom side of the melamine upon exit, so you are not left with blowout or chips. The teeth are made with extra hard sub-micrograin carbide tips for long life. If your process is a little more specialized and you need a saw blade designed to cut plastic, we have a solution for you. Our 10-inch plastic cutting blade is an 80-tooth blade that is designed for smooth, chip-free cutting on soft plastics, thin-walled phenolic, and hard plastic, as well as plywood and laminates. They're also suitable for cross-cutting, trimming, and mitering wood. Our final blade for this video is Klingspore Solid Surface Blade. This 10-inch 72-tooth blade is specifically designed for cutting plastic laminates, plexiglass, solid surface, and other acrylic-based materials. The triple chip grind tooth configuration is specifically designed to leave a swirl-free cut in solid surface materials. The thick, stable plate reduces the vibration that would normally degrade the cut and shorten the life. In addition, the zero degree hook angle virtually eliminates self-feeding for use in radial arm saws. Join us for our next installment as we look at Klingspore's fine trim and crosscut blades and our heavy duty miter and double miter blade. Uh, interesting tool that I saw in that video is the adjustable scoring set. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Absolutely. That's, uh, let me start off by saying that adjustable scoring set is not uh, for any table saw. Uh, you have to have a special setup for those. You have to have either the sl a sliding table saw or what's referred to as a panel saw. If you've walked in some of these box, big box stores and you've seen somebody that's bought a, a piece of plywood, four by eight sheet of plywood, and they want to cut, and the man walks over there and leans this up on this great big machine, that's a panel saw. And in a lot of instances, and here's my favorite again, melamine, uh, you've got to have a clean cut on both sides of that thing. So these uh, adjustable scoring sets cut in conjunction with another saw blade. Uh, so what happens is, it, and, and like you saw on the graphic on the video, our video team did a great job with that. Uh, that little adjustable scoring set blade is only three and a quarter inches, or three and three quarter inches. And that thing actually goes up underneath the table and pokes through just a little bit. So when that piece of, of melamine is shoved through the table saw, it's basically just barely scoring the bottom side of that. So that gives it a clean cut on the bottom. And then right behind that, you'll have a full size blade set up and it goes through that blade and cuts the top side and the rest of that material in the middle. So then you get a clean cut on the both, the, both the top and the bottom side. Uh, the reason we're so adamant about a, getting a clean cut on both sides is that in most cases, when you're doing something like that, you're gonna edge tape, what we, what we call edge tape, the uh, front edge of a piece of plywood, say. And, and that piece of plywood has to have a good clean cut because when you edge tape it and you file those edges down, you still see the cut edge that, that you started with. So it's got to be clean. If they're chips, they're, they'll show. They'll show like crazy. 
Uh, when the edge taping process takes place, they use a vinyl edge tape for white melamine. They'll use a natural wood edge tape, which is, a, which is actually a, a little thin, narrow strip of veneer with uh, hot melt glue on the back side of it. And uh, they'll apply that to that front edge. Once they sand that and file that flush with the edge, then you see those nice clean cuts that the scoring set and the backing blade made. So whether it's melamine or plywood or double-sided melamine, uh, we've got a, we've got a blade for it, and, and outside of just the blade, the scoring set is just another tool to give you a clean cut. With the cost of material always on the rise and some material not being available, you want to be careful with your workpiece, and so making the right cut the first time is something that uh, Clean Sports here to help you with. We've got a blade for just about any cutting process. Uh, if you have questions about those blades, reach out to your local rep or call in and talk to uh, St. Nick, our local uh, saw blade expert. He's uh, got you covered on that. A lot of years uh, behind a, a saw blade, he can answer just about any question that you have. We've got two videos remaining in our five-part video series here. Uh, can, they're not released yet, so can you tell us a little bit about uh, what to expect in the fourth and fifth installment of this series. Yeah, in the fourth installment of the series, we're getting into some of the uh, higher tooth count blades. Uh, our uh, fine trim and cross cut blade and our heavy duty miter and double miter blades. Uh, with some of these blades, you get up over 100 teeth. Uh, once you get up that high, you're looking at a real super clean cut. And there again, you know, I've installed cabinets in multi-million dollar houses. And when you get some of these crown molds that have uh, hand carved uh, uh, grape vines running through them and stuff like that, when those, when those amounts of material are ordered, they order them really super close. So you've got to have a clean cut the very first time. So, you know, you might have an extra foot to play with to run these, this crown molding all the way across the fronts of all these cabinets. So if you've got a blade that's not cutting cleanly, it comes down to a point where either you're either going to have to order and finish more material or you're going to have to get out the putty and do the best you can with it. And, you know, in, in a multi-million dollar home, that's just not an option. So it's got to be a clean cut. So these blades are both good clean cutting blades in that fourth video. We get to the fifth video and we start talking about our thin walled and thick walled non-ferrous and aluminum blades cutting soft metals. And so tell me, Nick, what's the difference between those two blades? Uh, basically, if you look at the names of them, and I'd like to point out before we go any further, too, that Klingspore saw blades are named according to how they're, how they're to be used. Uh, you see here we've got a miter saw blade. Well, basically that's for mitering. Over here we've got a solid surface blade. That'll cut solid surface. Over on your end, we're looking at a ripping saw blade. That's for ripping. If you're not sure what ripping is, ripping is cutting with the grain of the wood. Uh, if you're cutting across the grain of the wood, well, we've got a cross-cut blade for that. So basically, it's, it's a simple thing. These blades are named according to uh, how to, they're to be used. It's the same way with the thin and the thick-walled non-ferrous and, alum and aluminum blades. The uh, thin-walled uh, non-ferrous and aluminum blade is for cutting a material that's less than a quarter of an inch thick. Uh, if you've got something that's thicker than that, then we move to the thick-walled non-ferrous and aluminum blade. To, uh, to cut a quarter of an inch and up. And, and we suggest, you know, we are, we're always really safety conscious here at Klingspore, and we want our, our customers to be as safe as possible when using our products. And we always recommend that if you've got a thin-walled piece of material, cut, use the thin wall blade. If you're moving up in the thickness of your material, by all means, get the thick wall blade. Keep one of each on hand, so when you need to cut that thicker material, you'll have that thing, you know, handy. So with a lot of thought going into our blades, simplified uh, terminology on our blade to identify which blade for which cut, and um, a strong supporting cast. If you have questions about your blade, there's really no reason to, to, to choose the wrong blade for your cut. So if you have uh, questions, feel free to give us a call. Reach out to our customer service team or our tech team or your local sales rep, and we'll be happy to help you out with that. Um, that just about wraps us up for episode number nine. We want to thank you for being with us. We want to remind you that if you have questions about saw blades, even though we ran out of time, we're happy to circle back in a future episode. Or maybe you have a question about something else uh, that one, someone from our team can, uh, can answer for you. Just email those in to techtalk at cleansport.com. Uh, I'm Scott. I'm Nick. And we wish you a happy holidays from the Cleansport team. Ho, ho, ho.